All right, all right. First off, the secrets of the universe cannot be unraveled without fuel. This is a creative free think exercise, and I'm simply taking you along on the journey with me. When we have the Wacom pen, my drawing tablet in front of me, and a blank white screen, you know some stuff is about to go down, all right? So, what is the point of today's video? I've been creating a lot of content about Don't Railroad. As a dungeon master, don't get too attached to one idea. Give your players the freedom to choose where they want to go. I think for new DMs especially, that can come off as quite difficult because it doesn't give you as the dungeon master, the creator of the story, a lot of room to attach and latch on to something that's important to you. You know, it, it kind of can be so, it's all for the players. Center the world around them. Have their actions matter than anyone else. But what about the dungeon master? What about the story that you want? So I want to kind of flip the script, turn the table upside down, rotate the cube, whatever. We have a tree. Right? It's all beautiful and there's a lot going on and there's you know branches and vines and sinew and whatever right and we've got all this stuff right and we're starting to create bark i'm just brainstorming here leave me alone don't bother me right now just hold on you need to wait part of this video folks and i'm not going to give you a timestamp to skip ahead so the hell with it you're going to watch me draw a tree that really is not going to matter. Okay, so we've got these vines coming across. And I, yes, this is a red tree, so it's a blood tree. This is the tree that within right here, there's a demonic portal. Right? But hold on. It can't be a demon portal unless we first create... demon symbol see how this is working see this it's looking really neat okay so there's the tree all right so we have a tree we don't even need this tree wait hold on i told you this is creative free think i am not you are not prepared that's illidan shadowlands guys world of warcraft's new expansion comes out in like a month right so here's the point we have a tree. Up top is the fruit. This fruit represents planning. I'm not going to use this color. The red can be too aggressive. This fruit represents planning. First, let me make sure all the buttons are being pushed. Record. Hold on, hold on. Ah, good. Okay. It represents um, energy, which kind of goes one and the same with planning. Effort. Culmination. That's a good word. Of story. Let me elaborate a little further, okay? We've got this fruit. That's the boss fight, folks. Okay, that's what I spent all week. I play on the weekends. So my Monday through Friday, I'll try and find and weave some time in there to plan my D&D &D session. That planning, okay, this big iconic, whatever, that thing right there, the X with the circle, that is the, that's my efforts for the week. Okay, this is the miniature I've painted. I have a boss fight I want my PCs to fight. This is the miniature I painted. This is the terrain that I've built to represent the layer of that boss. Okay, all of the Photoshop files, the pictures, the, the pictures I've printed out that I'm going to show to my players. This is everything. Okay, this is all of my energy and effort. Here's where we can get into the, the neat creative think part of this video. Oftentimes, without having the experience that, again, I've said this 7,000 times. I'm not the greatest. I'm not the best. It's not the only the right way. But I've been doing this dungeon master thing for like 38 years. That may be longer than some of you have been alive. Okay. 
I know how to weave my way through this, but oftentimes on my videos of give your players that sense of freedom, give your players the choice, give your players the ability to create the story. Don't railroad what can kind of, that can come across as when you don't understand the flow and the process is it can sort of represent this is one and the same as this, right? This black dot represents the planning, the energy, the effort, the culmination of the story. And then what can happen is it can feel like I'm saying to do this. Create three equally impactful stories and allow your players to decide where they want to go. What I'm saying in this video is to treat this singular thing as the most important thing you've done. If for no other reason than because you've put the most energy and effort into creating this thing. So that way you don't feel like you're un you're going to undo and you, and you don't create for the whole week and say, well, I'm putting all this time and energy and it's becoming my baby, but I want to give them the freedom to not choose this. No, 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 no. Let's back up a little bit. Okay. This is the fruit at the top of the tree. That's why I drew the tree. The hand is going to grasp at that piece of fruit. There is no other fruit to grab, but the hand represents this. The hand is blue. The hand is going to grasp this fruit. Okay. Notice we've created five branches. Let me go back to black. Now this is player freedom. As they navigate their way up the tree, these branches branch out and they all reach for the same piece of fruit. First off, to kind of start to put some action steps to this rambly free think here, decide on what that single piece of fruit that their piece that your PCs, your group is reaching for. Decide on what that is. Generally, it will be whatever you have put the most energy, effort, planning into, and what maybe is the the climactic, you know, the, the final battle, the boss fight. And remember, this doesn't have to be end of campaign sort of. When you're creating your campaigns and your stories, you need to have a bunch of little pockets of like final, you know, end of the chapter things. Okay. It doesn't have to be the end of the main storyline. Just create some finishing point, something that your PCs feel like, okay, at the end of that story arc, there was some resolution, but that led into a bigger, larger, grander story. Okay. Whatever that is for you, that is the piece of fruit at the top of the tree that the hand is reaching up to. The fingers of the hand form the branches. So notice that what we've done is we've kind of appeased both sides. For the PCs, we've given them the freedom because the manner in which they grab that fruit, they might latch onto this branch or this one or this one. We've given freedom to PCs, but also we've settled the DM's creative mind and efforts. Okay. Freedom to the PCs is given because you're giving them branches, manners, and ways which hand, which finger they want to use to kind of poke at and grab at that fruit. But we've settled the DM's creative mind and efforts because you you know how you now have the confidence that when you bring this thing to the table, it's going to most importantly, actually be utilized. Your PCs are actually going to take part in that. And when you do that, your PCs will latch onto that. Assuming you have a really good group, a consistent group. I'm fortunate that I've been playing kind of with the same people for 20 plus years. No exaggeration. Okay. And those that are new is like my wife and my son, who I've only been playing with them since fifth edition came out, but it's my wife and my son. I know the people at my table and they know when they need to kind of latch on to what I want to come up with just for the sake of making me happy. Okay. So as you become more familiar with your group, 
both sides will just feel at peace with this. You're giving options, you're not railroading, but yet they're just ultimately grabbing onto that one thing. So that way you feel like all the energy and effort you put into building and painting that miniature and building that terrain and settling onto that encounter, that's going to happen, okay? But this branch might represent, if I move this out of the way, this could be speak to NPC. This could be attack the place. This one could be find the thing. This one could be, and I'm just coming up with these right now. Um, rescue them. This could be bargain with the wrong dude. You pray to the wrong God. You're desperate. Okay? These branches attacking the place at some point will lead to this fight. Speaking to that key NPC at some point will lead to that fight. Finding the magic item scouring the dungeons and the tombs and the crypts to find that thing will lead to this as will rescuing them a pc has been captured rescue him i'm thinking of like left for dead 2 where they're banging on the door and they're stuck hey let me out let me out or you know mario brothers right rescuing the princess or finding the noble's daughter and as a result the noble's going to give you some key items that you'll need in this fight but regardless it's going to lead to that fight and finally bargain with the wrong dude right you make a pact warlock style with some demonic entity some fiendish force and that's the only way you're able to unseal the door to get into the layer of the bad boss right so as a dungeon master create this thing which can kind of be the final moment, the end battle, the boss fight, the resolution to that, whether it's a mini storyline or the you know, end of campaign story. Create that seed, that fruit that's at the top of the tree. And think of the hands and the fingers reaching up to that fruit. And this is where you create variety and player choice. Yes, you're going to have to create these things. Some of these may happen on the fly because you may have created attack the place, speak to the NPC and find the thing. And of course, inevitably, your PCs are going to say, you know what, we want to bargain with the dude. And you don't have a lot planned for that. But these little mini bubbles maybe don't need as much investment. And you can kind of wrangle those things and figure those things up out on the fly and still allow that player choice. But you're not going to take away from all of the real intense effort you've put in because they're still going to do that thing. And that's just a much a different. Okay, I think better, but a different way than creating these real big points of investment and kind of having the hand go the wrong way, right? This is where they start in the tavern, and I want them to have the freedom to choose which way they go to a big storyline. No, 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 no. What we're doing now is we're saying, there's my big storyline. That's where I'm putting my energy, and I want the hand to reach up to that but notice this is attack the place this is speak to the npc this is bargain with the wrong dude this is find the thing but then from here i might have these branches come into this which is the pcs meet in the tavern you see how that goes but think of what these points are and I think when you do that, this is what makes the DM happy because it feels like you're prepped, you put time and energy, and you're excited about this thing, but still figure out how we can kind of branch into it to allow the PCs the freedom. So again, I know it's very, I mean, come on, the screen indicates that. It's very rambly. It's all over the place. I like that demonic tree. I'm going to do something with that. But I think the point is I wanted to show you how it's a creative free think video. So I don't know. I hope something there just a little, little bit helped. If nothing else, you now have a spark of inspiration of creating a demonic portal set into this ancient necrotic tree of doom and death. <laughs> That's all I have for you folks. Thanks everyone. Take care.